Today we're talking about Pearl River Pianos, one of the most affordable piano product lines on the market. But because of that, people often ask the question, is Pearl River a good piano? Today, we discuss. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. And I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our other YouTube channels, check out our other videos, leave us comments, subscribe, like our videos. We love to interact with you guys and really appreciate the support. Ted. Hey, we get asked about Pearl River pianos all the time. I know, I, and it was funny because I was like, we were doing a little research and history, history looking up for this and I was like, Ted, do you remember Pearl River? Like I said, I lived through it. I sold through it. It, it, was, yeah. like a, it was like a flashback. I saw your eyes just like glaze over there. Well, yes. it, it's funny <laughs> that you mention that because a lot of people say, well, I never heard of Pearl River. I don't know anything about Pearl River pianos. Are they, is that a good brand? And, and so, it, that, I mean, that's the question we're asking you today. Is it a good brand? That's a, I mean, that's a, there's such an, a quality, I mean, sorry, I don't want to spoil it. There's such an affordable instrument. Was, Very affordable. Pianos. When you're looking at new pianos and you're like, okay, this is a brand new X and it costs fifteen thousand dollars, and I just want the entry line baby grand, and this is a brand new Y and it cost me twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and there's all these prices and they're super high, and then you go to Pearl River, and it's a significant decrease, and they're like, what? There must be something wrong Something's with this. Something's wrong, right? And and I and as buyers, we do this. We attribute low price mm -hmm. to low quality. Uh, is it Walmart? Uh, what is, what's well, it? I'll tell you what it is, is a lot of times when people come in, especially in this day and age, and they look at a brand new Pearl River piano, whether it's an upright, and if it's their Rittmuller line, which we'll get into the lines in a little bit, Pearl River or Rittmuller, or it's a grand piano, there's, there's always this wonder and amazement that, hey, this fits the bill. This gets a great playing piano, and it seems to sound like a piano, and it just I'm worried about it because it doesn't seem to cost as much as other pianos. And part of that wonder and amazement is that that's where Pearl River is now. That's where they've been for about the last 10, 12 years. Prior to that, in 1956, is when they, the company was first formed, the Pearl River uh, Ganzu Piano Company. And... Uh, they actually are the largest piano manufacturer in the world, and they own 30% of the worldwide market, which is a lot. Almost every single piano in China is going that's, to be a pro. Really. That's significant because you yeah. think about it, and that's one in almost one in every three pianos that I would walk by if I, they were all lined up would be a Pearl River made by Correct. Pearl. Correct, made by Pearl River, which is kind of an, an, an amazing thing. But part of their history that they don't really talk about a lot of times. Uh, they used to when it was part of their big marketing program was uh, in order to compete with manufacturing pianos on a worldwide basis, Pearl River actually uh, went to Yamaha after Yamaha had approached them about uh, the Chinese government about building a factory in China. And the Chinese government recognized that they didn't have a well-rounded uh, world-received piano manufacturer from their nation. And so they kind of formed a partnership between Yamaha and the Chinese government that ran for 10 years. And we had a few of those pianos that came in that were not really Yamaha. They were the old Pearl Rivers. Mm -hmm. And uh, your grandfather ordered them and brought them in because they were doing a Pearl River clean out. And every single one of those pianos we ended up having to send back. They, they, they were, that was like sometime in the 90s, I believe. And it's not that it was an inferior product, they just didn't manufacture a product that had to be shipped so far. And so it endured a lot of different kind of heat elements and mm -hmm. all these kind of things that, that but within a, a matter of years of Pearl River uh, partnering with Yamaha and the Chinese government, they built this phenomenal factory, the largest piano manufacturer uh, factory on the planet. And they produce, I think, 120,000 pianos a year, which is which is a lot of pianos. You break it down in a month, that's 10,000 a month. You break it down by days. They're, these, putting, they're putting out some pianos. And these aren't easy things to manufacture. They're not easy things. And when you consider that every one of them has over 10, sometimes around 11 or 12,000 working component parts in it, 
um, that's not even considering all the components that are glued together. Mm -hmm. You know, just the, the functioning parts together. So it's kind of amazing. Uh, they had an IPO from Pearl River that placed in 2012, and that really opened up a lot of marketing doors, and it really opened up the worldwide market to Pearl River. The other part that they had is right about the time that they were looking at the last couple years of finishing up this partnership with Yamaha, they started to develop a premier piano line, and they took an old piano name from around 1795 called Rittmuller, and they worked that in, which is, is that what, what we, we have, have here. This is what we have us? today, yes. And the Rittmuller line is, a, is essentially a German-made components assembled and, and put together in China. And since uh, then, I've just recently found out is going through, I have not played one of the uh, Kaiserberg pianos, mm -hmm. but that's actually an even more elite piano than Rittmuller is another name. And those are their, these are considered performance and professional pianos, the Rittmullers, and they have the artist line that they, they make now called the Kaiserberg. Oh yeah, and, and those ones are more handmade, like to it. To they're more handmade. They also include the German Roslau strings, the uh, French manner of uh, developing the cloth, which uh, is the 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 wool, which is a lot different. And then they also put Renner hammers on those mm -hmm. pianos. So uh, the few pianos that I've played in my life that had Renner hammers put on them or come with Renner hammers are always just a, a real joy. And the one thing that I had not mentioned about Pearl River pianos and the Rittmullers is that after that merger with Yamaha pianos, all of their pianos play very, very similar, if not exact like yeah. Yamaha. So I, 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 in hearing that story and about how many pianos that they do manufacture every month and every year, it's really, it begs that question, is this a quality instrument? And, and it's, and it, like you said, it's something that's skewed a little bit over time and with the last 10, 15, 20 years coming out from Pearl River, we see, we see a lot of their used instruments come through our store as well as have the Rittmuller brand and the Pearl River brand here in our store. And I'm sure if you guys have visited manufa or visited piano stores around the country, you'll find a similar experience and, say, and they'll offer something that has history with Pearl River. And, and it really drives home the question, is this a good piano? Because all these people are standing behind it. There's, these are warranty centers. We're a warranty center. We're, we're right. uh, um, putting our name associated with Pearl River. And we needed to rely on a product that's not only affordable, but also a great instrument and will last a beginner or an intermediate player into, into, and through the lifespan of the instrument. Correct. And then also, you know, Pearl River manufactures pianos for other piano manufacturers. Mm -hmm. They do make the Essex line, which is... Um, a little bit different than, uh, it's it's quite different than the Pearl River line and, and Rittmuller and the Kaiserberg line as well. But the, uh, the Essex line has um, some furniture pianos in the upright models. They have um, the the regular uh, upright pianos console, mm -hmm. and then they also have their, their grand piano yeah, lines have, and their quality instruments. They have a huge assortment of offerings, not only in uh, what Pearl River and Rittmuller put their name on, but also, like you said, in who they manufacture for. And, and Steinway, you know, Steinway, the, the king of, of all pianos, uh, had originally manufactured their affordable instrument with Young Chang. Correct. And Young Chang made Essex, and so those early Essex were manufactured by a Korean company. And I think there was some issue there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what did, what did Steinway, you know, what did Steinway pick? They, they went to... Went shopping, right? They went out shopping, and they had... This, this huge contract that they're saying, hey, this is going to be our most afford affordable Steinway product. Let's get a quality instrument in people's homes. Mm. So I, I, I just, it's always great. And we're going to play these pianos because we really want you guys to hear what a rip is going to sound like um, because they are incredible instruments. And we've put, we've done videos, reviews where we're putting this with a Yamaha GB1 and with a Kawai, uh, the Kawai GL10 and, and some other of these entry line instruments. And the Rittmuller really shines and has its own place there. There's a page and a half written up in the book of Grand Obsession is mm -hmm. the name of the, uh, the book. And it's a true story of this customer that purchased a piano and didn't like the tone in her house. And it was a very expensive piano, thirty dollars or $40,000 piano. And uh, this is a, like a 20-year-old story, but a uh, 10 or 15-year-old story. The one model that she plays in her quest as she goes around the, the world, because the story takes a number of years, is she ends up running in and playing a brand new Rittmuller that was about their, around their six to seven foot model. 
And uh, she actually said that the tone on it was a lot more of what she was looking for than this piano she had really shelled out for and had to get a bunch of tech, uh, technicians and tuners. And yeah. It's a, it's a story of a quest for finding the perfect intonation and tune on a piano. And she said what about and the she Rip mentioned Mueller? the Rip Mueller's was one of those that had she known about it, she would have seriously considered making that purchase and would have saved about two-thirds of the expense. Yeah, I mean, so there, it's a fantastic instrument, and, and I think the answer to the question... After we play it, you guys can decide for yourself. But it's, yes, not only an affordable instrument, but an also exceptional value at the price offering. Not only do all these man all these dealers around the country stand behind Perover and, and carry Rittmuller as a brand that's not going to fall apart on their customers and fall apart on the piano players of Absolutely. their communities, but someone like Steinway is going to say, we trust this product so much that we're going to co-brand with you guys and say, this is the Essex piano built for Steinway. By Pearl River. That's an amazing statement of uh, consistency and quality that uh, Steinway can can rely on. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too is don't forget the collegiate sales and the university sales. We've had a few few years back where there were a couple of the seven and nine footer um, Rip Mueller's that oh, yeah. we sold, and they were sold to great venues. There, I mean, there, are, there. Are not, people want to call look for the bargain. That's that's also quality. And I think this is in the piano world the closest thing you're going to get to finding a, a hidden oh. gem, especially if you take the time to go play these instruments. They are exceptional. And if the more you spend, the more you get with these, um, of course, but. And don't forget the Rittmuller's also, for that reason I just mentioned about the collegiate and university sales, almost every single Rittmuller we sell, whether it's an upright or a grand, you have the highest instance of customers calling back and thanking you for showing them that instrument. And they brag about how much they love their instrument and how much they've played it for other people, particularly those large grants that, that we've sold. And those professors will not part with it. They were a little leery when they first heard about it and they mm -hmm. came in and they played it and they played it. And then after having it in their in their location for a couple of years, they just rave about the Rip Mueller's yeah. and, and word has spread to where there's been some other referred sales. So enough about hearing about it. Let's actually hear the instrument. So Ted is going to play for us today, and we're going to take a listen to this Rip Mueller R8 real quick.
Okay, so Patrick, you've heard me talk and then you heard me kind of play. So what are your thoughts? I mean, is Pearl River a good brand? I love Pearl River and I love Rip Mueller. I think there's a, such a value statement when you when you sit down and you and you listen to someone. We're surrounded by pianos all the time. We're lucky enough to be surrounded by pianos. And I think that the things that kind of separate good pianos from great pianos um, to just okay pianos is, is kind of that dynamic range that a player can get out of it. And, and when I hear you sit here and I play your, you play your little passages and all that, it's, there's little nuances that like come out in the melody of the keys. Are, it's, it's, it shines in a sweet spot. It almost, and, we, and we hear a lot of, I would say, bright pianos here. Um, and sometimes that's the older used ones, right. like very brilliant, great sounding instruments. This one always, to me, kind of takes a step back and, and is a little bit more, I, I don't know if, it, if I want to use the word compressed, but it, it's, it's got a nice warmth over it, a, a warmth tone, and, and I think it's a, nice, it's a nice option for people who aren't looking for something um, that's traditional Yamaha, traditional sure. Kawhi, traditional Steinway, something that has its own flavor a little bit. You just reminded me of something, too. The one thing that I think... Uh, I just need to relay a little bit of human story here with mm -hmm. the, the Pearl River and the Rip Mueller line is, it's always a wonderful thing when you get a young family that comes in and they've had a couple of children that are players, they've been playing a couple of years and this is their time when the parents are seriously considering going out and buying them a grand piano. And they've gone out and they've had sticker shock from all the prices. And you see the family come in and they tell you what kind of pianos they've looked at and you thought, oh, they've looked at all tier one and tier two, very expensive pianos. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they know they're not going to be buying one of those. But after spending some quality time with the family going around the store, you find out that there's a Pearl River or a Rip Mueller option that actually puts a grand piano into their home where it wasn't before. And you get to see those kids light up. And you know what they're going to have for mm -hmm. the next 10, 12 years, 15 years. They're going to grow up in that household playing a wonderful instrument it, and expanding their musical capabilities. It's very, it's, I think it's a neat product because if you are a customer and, like you said, like if you get sticker shock and you see oh, well, I heard, like, I just need to look for a Yamaha, or I heard I just need to look for a Kawhi, or I need to look for a Steinway. The, the people who often recommend that are people who bought one 40 or 50 years ago right, and have one right. in their house, and it's, and it's, like, easy for them to say, shell out this much money for it. And so you start looking at used instruments, and there's nothing wrong with looking for a quality used instrument, but if you're someone that is going to be putting the hours in on a piano and needs something that's going to consistently be a 10-year warranty, be something that you can really... Put your mind at ease. This is a nice in-between where it's like you're looking at used pricing on some of these premier brands, and then you see Rip Mueller Pearl River at a new pro at a new product, new price. right right there in line with some of these used items. Maybe a little bit more, but you get that that new instrument in your home that no one's ever played before, and that really you can put the miles on. Right. If we're talking about like cars here, you can put the miles on and really play it, and then you're not looking at used instruments anymore. You're looking at a brand new one. And it's a lot easier to digest that price than it is in some of these True. top tier price points. Um, so I really think there is a place for this instrument in almost every piano store. And it's an option I think that every piano buyer should consider. Um, it's not gonna it's not gonna be, you know, a concert level grand piano, but it's gonna be an affordable one that sounds good, that's quality, and that you can grow with. Absolutely. And so, yeah, we just wanted to highlight the Pearl River brand today and really answer the question we hear all the time, is Pearl River a good piano? I think both Ted and I would say a resounding yes. Yeah, I think they're great pianos. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Again, we're Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com where we have lots of used pianos, lots of new pianos, lots of content that we're trying to bring to you guys. Feel free to check out our website. Feel free to chat with us on that website. Please, again, subscribe to our YouTube channels. We have multiple ones. Um, leave us comments, like our videos. We really appreciate, appreciate all the love and support. Ted Barslew, and I'm Patrick. Thanks for watching.